So with that said, uh, my name is Kyle Blagg. Uh, this is Gary Siepser. Uh, we're both senior pr premier field engineers with Microsoft. Uh, we're just two of, of probably several hundred people that basically come together to create the, the Microsoft Surface NFL solution. Um, how many people have seen it on TV or heard about it in the media? Uh, so from, what, from the few of you I can actually see because of the bright lights, most of you. So with that, we'll jump into this real quick. What's it take to break through? Is it strength? Talent? Grit? How will you find that edge? Can a surface help you do it? Can a surface help make you smarter? Fly faster. Make perfect. Read minds. It's not about what a Microsoft Surface can do. It's what you can do with it. Cool. So in that video, you saw a variety of different ways that we currently use Surface with the NFL. Uh, there's obviously the game day operations that you see. That's what you typically see on, or on TV, on the sidelines. And then there's also some behind the scenes uh, with the individual teams that we work with. That the teams use it for their digital playbooks. They use it during um, the off season. So basically that way they can study their plays. They can rewatch video, et cetera. So for the sake of this, we're going to actually focus mostly on what we do on the sideline, just to kind of give you a sneak peek behind the scenes in terms of how does this system actually operate. Uh, we do have four devices up here um, that after the session, you're more than welcome to go hands on. The only catch is you can't do any videos. But if you want to take a, a picture with your phone or whatever, no problem with that. But that way, you can kind of go hands on and kind of see and feel exactly what the players and coaches are using during the game. Um, and we'll also do kind of a short demo during the presentation so you can see that as well. So from a portfolio standpoint from a devices, we basically have the entire stack across the league in, in various capacities. Uh, obviously, you saw there from a, the Surface standpoint, we also have a, a number of teams that are using even Windows Phone. They have custom apps that they've developed um, as part of that. And then we've had a, a number of teams that have also expressed interest in using HoloLens going forward. So, and then on top of that, we, we have a number of teams that currently use PPI devices. They're looking forward to incorporating the new Surface Hub into their environment um, for that. So here's kind of one of the, the official tablet of the NFL. That's, that's what Surface is. It's a device that was ultimately built by the fan or built for the fans, but trusted by the pros. So in this case, you can see one of the coaches interacting with one of the players. You'll see firsthand here in a few minutes exactly what kind of content they're looking at and what they're using it for on the sidelines. So from agenda standpoint, we'll talk about some of the requirements that we had as an overall uh, a team standpoint. So like I said, we're only two of several hundred people that basically come together to ultimately create the solution as, it is, as you see it today. Some of the technical challenges that we faced, and I guarantee a lot of those challenges are going to also be some of the challenges that you face in your everyday corporate environment. Uh, same thing from the solution components, actually what it's actually compiled together to make this solution. It's not just the surface. Uh, there's a number of other components that kind of come together to make that happen. Um, also, some of the things that we learned. Obviously, there was some pain points along the way. We had to adapt and overcome and, and basically um, find ways to actually resolve those particular issues, as well as the key takeaways that we've, we've learned up to, until this point. So from an objective standpoint, one of the, the tricky parts of this is we don't have the luxury of time. So we basically come together as a team. We have to have everything ready by a certain date. And that means from a manufacturing standpoint all the way up until it's installed on the sideline and it's ready for game day. Um, so there, there's a lot of challenges there just from a sourcing logistics as well as from a technology standpoint of actually making that happen. And then from an operational standpoint, obviously we have to get all these servers, surfaces, and get it onto the sideline with the teams, and then make sure everything is powered on, good to go, and ready for game day. And then ultimately how it can be used in complex environments and operations. And we'll talk a little bit more in detail about what that looks like. So from a requirement standpoint, uh, 
who's seen devices being thrown or they'll hit, a, they'll hit some, they'll, they'll throw it on the ground of their helmet, uh, they'll step on it, whatever it may be. So we have to account for those types of scenarios where they're not exactly as, as uh, they don't use it like they should in terms of taking care of their devices like you would want your end users to. So we have to make sure that we account for that. How do we make this device as durable as possible? And part of that is what you'll see is these right here are your booth devices, and then the devices that are on the sideline are in a little bit more rugged case to particularly address that scenario. Um, and then also we have to take into account the power and performance. So they're, they're looking at screenshots during the game. We have to make sure, obviously, that the device is available to them throughout the entire game. So the average game is give or take about three hours. Uh, but it can go into overtime and it can go farther than that. So we have to make sure that the devices are going to last during the entire game, as well as making sure that, like if it's in, let's say, uh, San Francisco and you got the bright sunlight, we have to account for that sunlight factor as well. So how do we ensure that the devices are actually usable in that bright sunlight as well? And then versatility from a standpoint of every single coach is different and every player is different. So what one person needs may not be the same as what the next person needs. So we have to account for that in when we're developing this solution to make everything as easy as possible. So from a utility standpoint, we work with uh, the various teams on digital playbooks. So that's what the individual players are using and that's what you saw some references to in the video where they actually have their playbooks. So whenever they call a play, they have basically this application on the, on the devices that they can use where they can, they can look at the play, they can mark it up, so that way whenever they're doing their studying in between games or even in the off season, then they can use that for uh, learning what they need to learn. The other part of that is it also allows instant replay of video, so whenever they're reviewing this video, they can go in and mark it up and they can compare the video to what the actual play was supposed to be. And then on-air talent, so a perfect example of this is some of the um, the on-air talent for NBC or some of the other media outlets, they typically will have someone on, on uh, set using a Surface device during the broadcast to help demonstrate whatever it is that they're trying to show at that particular point in time. And then from a business operations standpoint, the teams leverage Surface, uh, whether it be for playbook devices, whether it be for the, the GMs of the, the teams, or anybody in between. Um, so they're, they're used across the board with all the uh, different resources there. And then from a fan engagement, so if you're walking around the stadium in a lot of the different stadiums, you'll actually see people interacting with fans. A lot of fantasy football related stuff can happen in, in the stadiums. Um, and a lot of times that is being done via Surface. And then from a functionality standpoint, obviously the Surface sideline viewing system, which is what we're going to talk about here in a little bit more detail in a minute. Um, and then the device charging carts. We wanted to get one here so you could see it, but you'll see a picture of it anyway in just a minute. So what that is, is it's a, a charging cart that actually we can put up to 16 devices in. It's air conditioned and heated. So depending on the environment, we can ensure that device is charged. If it's overheating, we can put it in there. The air conditioner will cool it down and vice versa for heat. So that way, when we're in a hot environment, we can keep it cool. But when it's in a cool environment, we can actually warm it up. So that way it stays within the operational uh, temperature bounds that it's uh, supposed to stay in. And then suite management. So we have a number of teams that are starting to leverage Surface in their suites. So what that is, is let's say I go in and I, I rent the suite for the game, they will actually leverage the Surface to order more drinks or order more food, control the lighting, control the AC systems in the, in the suites. So we're really starting to see a lot of the teams incorporate Surface into not only the player aspect of things, but kind of across the board in, in all different aspects of what they do. So from a challenges standpoint, so this is one of the biggest parts. So if you think about it, there's 32 teams in the NFL. Every single one is completely separate. So every team has their own stadium. With the exception of New York, there's actually two teams that, that share the same stadium. But the challenge for us is we deploy the system to these stadiums, and then once it's in that stadium, we don't have a way to access it. It's a completely disconnected network that outside of that environment, we can't access it. So how do you maintain a system going forward after you deploy it when you can't reach it? Yeah. And obviously, we live here in Atlanta, so if there's a game going on in San Francisco, Seattle, wherever, how do we manage that system? How do we update it? How do we do whatever we need to do from an operational standpoint? So that's one of the things we had to figure out. And then from a complex mission uh, control standpoint, so that's one of the things that, <clears throat> to these coaches, that device is mission critical. 
So that is what they use to show the players and coaches, other coaches, what you did right, what you did wrong, what you should change uh, during the process of the game. Uh, from a disparate, disparate user types, so what we thought was going to be the, the typical persona that the coach was going to be wasn't necessarily always the same. So we designed it for one coach, but then another coach or another video director would want something a little bit different. So how do we account for such a large user base when you figure the average team, depending on the season, is anywhere from 50 to 100 players? So we have to account for basically up to 3,000 different users at any given time when they could all be potentially different. And then, as I mentioned earlier, rapid design, test, and build. So from the minute we get the green light of saying, OK, this is the feature base that we're going to incorporate for this particular iteration, then we obviously have to test it, we have to deploy it, and then ultimately have to support it going forward. Um, so how do we do that in such a tight schedule, as well as, like I mentioned, in an environment that has no network connectivity after that system is deployed? Um, and then engineering, logistics, and support integration. So from there, once the system is there on the sidelines, then what? So if there's a situation that, that comes up, what, what do we do? So how do we support that system in a live game? So that's some of the challenges we have to figure out as, as we're doing this. Um, and then basically we have to make sure that it's optimized and it's mission critical for the field. So what we've done for that is in the past, every single location was isolated versus now everything is redundant. Just like you would in your own corporate data center, that if you're, one of your servers fails, what do you do? Typically you have a failover or, or some sort of redundancy built in. So we have to account for this, things like that as well. <clears throat> now from a, a specifics to the NFL, like I said, there's no data center. So think of each location as its own data center. So there's a series of servers on the sideline for each side, so one for home, one for visitor, and then there's another series in the booth, and, and Gary will talk about this a little bit more in detail when he talks about the infrastructure piece of kind of what all comes together to really make this happen. And then extreme weather. So you figure in some of the hottest climates, it can be up to 110, 120 degrees, and then once you factor in humidity, it, it can get even worse than that. But then also you figure in Green Bay in the middle of December and January, when it's below zero, how do we account for that, and how do we ensure that our devices are going to function as they should? And then networking, we talked about that already, how it's completely isolated uh, and it's completely disconnected uh, from there. And then logistics. So how do we, so we got our system, we got our services, we got our servers, now what? How do we get everything to where it needs to be and be there by the, the deadline that before season starts, and then I ultimately make sure that everything is good to go? So obviously that takes manpower. Um, that takes shipping, it takes a lot of people to make that happen. Um, so how do we do that in such a, a tight time frame? And then ultimately, you got one chance to get it right. There is no opportunity for failure. So whenever you're deploying this, you have to ensure that everything is done correctly the first time. So obviously that takes away from doing it manually. So what we've done is ultimately developed a fully automated deployment system that allows us to make sure that the, that deployment is done correctly every single time and that we're removing that human element out of doing that server configuration or that surface configuration. So that way everything is done the, the right way, the right time or the first time around. So with that, we'll turn it over to Gary real quick. All right, thank you. All right, so now we get on to what I think is the fun part because most of us here are IT pros and we want to geek out and we sort of want to know the how. How does it actually work? What does everything look like? So now we get, to, we get into the fun part now that Kyle got his boring stuff out. <laughs> okay, so first things first, the theme of, of ironically, uh, the, in the expo area and devices and certainly this session is changing the game, right? So we're trying to take and help the NFL to just make the game better. Right, give the coaches and players more capability on the sidelines, give them you know, color uh, photos. Because for those of you that are fans of the NFL and have watched games before, you probably remember that uh, you've got players that are, and coaches that are reviewing paper printouts. Right? So, and that's basically where this solution started, is it took those paper printouts, which were black and white, and you know, there was no shared information. You can't mark something in a notebook here and have it magically appear in a notebook over here. So we, t we took that solution and now took it to the next level. Uh, and with the NFL now, we've given them the ability to have color, right? I mean, that's, that's actually kind of a, a big deal. You can zoom in. That's huge, 
uh, being, just being able to just pinch and zoom and get into the images, annotations, uh, marking favorites, and annotations are shared between you know, devices. There's profiles for different coach types and different player types. It's, it's really a great solution. And we call it the, the, the sideline viewing system, or what we usually refer to as just SVS. So I'm going to get into uh, the different elements of SVS, the, the parts of the infrastructure, the architecture, and we'll touch a little bit on the operations and sort of how we do some of the behind the scenes elements. Um, another big part of the solution is the charging carts that Kyle mentioned, and I promise in a few slides there's a picture of one of them coming. Uh, these charging carts are, they're incredible little pieces of technology. For, for a cabinet whose ultimate job is really to hold devices, they're, they're pretty amazing little things. I love the charging carts. Uh, so you'll get to see a picture of that. And just the overall product research and development, and, and like Kyle said, I mean, there's actually a huge number of people that ultimately at some point come together on the Microsoft side to help design build, deploy this solution. You know, Kyle and I, we, we wear a few hats as part of this solution, uh, one of them being the support hat. So there are times when he and I, we don't go to every game or you know, anything like that, uh, but there are times when we are on the sideline to help support uh, the game, to deal with any kind of minor issues that might come up during the game, whatever. So uh, it's just, it's a complete team to bring this solution together, and the solution is all elements of a normal IT so solution, but just in a really unique scenario. <laughs> So let's get into the infrastructure here. So first things first, you see it on TV. You know, there, there's, there's, there's shots on the cameras, right, where you see a player, you see a coach, or like the picture that Kyle showed earlier. But that's all you really ever see. But behind the scenes, you've got to think about the game at a, at, and the stadium at a high level. You've got two teams, right? So we have a system for each sideline, right? And we have a number of tablets. There are 16 per sideline tablets that they use. But then there's also the coaching booth. And this is the area that you don't typically see much of. Sometimes on TV they might show a little shot of the coaches sitting in the booth. But those coaches up there need access to that sort of intelligence, if you will, and those color photos and these tablets. So we have a location in each coaching booth, and we have a location on each sideline. So there are really four autonomous systems where they operate independently. Okay. Now one cool thing that we've got uh, this year uh, and in typical IT fashion, right, when you build IT systems, you want to build durability, you want to build redundancy, you know, fail-safe type of capabilities. Well, this year, we have the ability to have some redundancy so that if something was to happen unexpected on, say, the sideline, uh, maybe the TV truck crashed into something and destroyed, <laughs> destroyed some component on the sideline that we needed, we actually have the ability to fail over and have the tablets talk to the system up top in the booth. So it, just like any typical IT project that you're going to do, we've had to do that sort of planning. It's just it's a bit of a different scenario. Um, so each system, and I told you there's four autonomous systems. You can kind of see the, the diagram of a field, if you will. Um, we have what's called the still shot server. And I'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide where we talk about the architecture. Um, there's the play view server. Again, that'll become more clear on the next slide. Um, and then you've got the 16 devices on the sideline, the 12 devices in the coach's booth. So all together, there are 56 devices per stadium. And for those of you that are already doing math in your head and you think about how many stadiums there are and how many devices there are per, some, some pretty staggering numbers. We've got a fun slide coming up in a few minutes where we'll just talk about some of those fun factoids and numbers like that. All right, so let's get into the architecture a bit. Um, I know the font's a little on the small side, but basically starting from the left side is where do the images come from? The, they don't actually come from cameras in the traditional sense, even though, yes, we're looking at still images. There, there's video cameras. So every team has their own video department, and they bring their video cameras to the game, and they, they have a shot from high end zone and high sideline. Okay, So they provide a video feed. And that video feed, and we're moving from left to right in the diagram, goes to what's called the still shot server. And this is a server that takes incoming video and allows the team to provide an operator who sits there all game long watching those video feeds and actually clicks the button of when those still shots are supposed to be taken. Thus is why it's called the still shot server. So the teams provide that personnel. And you know, different teams might have some slight variations on how they want the, the shot to look. Maybe they want the video to encompass all 22 players on the field. Maybe they just want to focus in on the offense and defensive lines. Okay? So each team has that capability. Within a common set of you know, equitable rules, they still get some ability so that one team can think that maybe it's advantageous to, to 
to, to take the pictures at different times than another team. So there's still some room for teams to, to use the system in a way that they feel is going to work, but still keep it competitive equality, if you will. All right. So then from the still shot system, that basically outputs the play information and the images, and that comes over to what we call the play view server. Okay? And the play view server is really the infrastructure that Microsoft really designed and put into play here. So uh, basically, we've got a server in every four of those locations. So yes, on the sideline, there is a, a server class piece of hardware that is a, a VM host running a couple of VMs. And we've got the typical kinds of you know, infrastructure that you would expect in any kind of network. So, I mean, we've got things like DHCP and, and DNS, and, you know, so, I mean, all the typical kinds of network stuff you'd expect. There's file shares, there's all sorts of different things. Um, we're leveraging Windows servers for that, we're leveraging Hyper-V, um, and we're leveraging SQL Server. Um, now, we're not going to get into too many details and specifics of, of how everything works there, but basically, the PlayView servers receive the images and the play information, and then the PlayView server is what then distributes that out, and again, following through to the left side of the diagram, to the actual tablets. So all of the tablets receive their information, and the plays come up, okay? Here's the cool thing. This system is so fast that when that operator hits the, the final thing, the final action that he takes to kind of finish the play, those images usually show up on the tablets within about one second. It's actually really impressive. And that's, you think about how much more efficient that makes the coaches and the players when, you know, they're out there wherever they are on the sideline doing what they need to do in their group and they're getting this stuff instantaneously. Okay, so we've talked a little about the infrastructure, a little about the architecture. Let's take a look finally at what it is that they're actually seeing um, on the device. So Kyle's going to flip it over here and show you a kind of a little, just a little live demo. So, so as Gary was mentioning, there we go. Um, so once the, the plays actually exit the PlayView server, they're then sent to the actual Surface devices on the sideline or in the booth, and this is what the coaches see. So as the plays come in, they'll actually come in over here on the, the left-hand side based on whatever series that is. So the series is for whatever that drive was. So in this particular case, uh, series 12 was a series of three plays, uh, basically first down, third down, second, or I'm sorry, first, second, and third, and then more than likely um, they punted or did a field goal depending on where they were on the field. So as part of the play, as Gary mentioned, they get these nice color photos. From here, they can illustrate directly on the image itself and say, you know, you were here, you ended up going straight back, when in reality you should have went over here. Now the cool thing about this is if I'm on this device and I'm trying to show this with another uh, player, they can also kind of follow along as well. And you can actually save these annotations to basically the server, so that way no matter which device I pick up, I can always go back to that exact same spot. Now, if something happens, and let's say, oh, I want to come back to this play later, I can set this play as what's called a favorite, and then from there, it will actually be available to me, and it'll show in, in a single location where each of those individual plays are. So like Gary mentioned, there was um, the, the high sideline and high end zone. So in this particular case, this is showing you the sideline. <clears throat> Let me exit. So then, so this kind of shows you in this particular profile for this particular coach, they do two shots from the sideline and two shots from the end zone. So this first one is going to be looks just a little bit before the snap, and then this one is going to be right after the snap. So what this shows them is it shows the, the coaches, based on their, the, whatever play that they called, they know where that player should have went versus where they actually went. So this way they can see firsthand whether they went right, whether they went left, and whether that was correct or not. And if not, then they can correct it on the next series. Or they can say, okay, well, when we ran this play, this is how the, the other team responded, so maybe we need to change up some things in terms of when we call this play. Um, so like I said, you got a variety of four different colors that you can choose from. You'll see up here at the top that you have all of the information related to that play. So in this particular case, we're in the fourth quarter. This is play 59 of the game. And then uh, it's the defense and it's play one of three of this particular series, the down, the gain, uh, as well as all that. Um, so it really makes it easier for them to see this. And then it's all touch friendly. So that way, as they go through the game, they can do this. Now, let's say they're looking at this and then the next play comes in. They can swipe, and then they automatically go to the next play. So now you'll see up here at the top, right here, I know the touch isn't really coming through the screen, 
But right up there at the top, towards the center, you can now see that I'm on play two of three. So they don't actually have to go back out to this, all the way out to the hub view just to go to the next play. They can actually transition from play to play to play. Uh, the other part, like he was mentioning, each coach can define basically what scenario they want to see. So some coaches may want to, to, to see all four, uh, basically two sideline, two end zone snapshots. Um, other coaches may only want to see the end zone. So uh, it's completely up to them. The teams create these profiles. We automatically ingest it. And then from there, we can sort the images accordingly and only show them what's relevant for them. So obviously, if you're a special teams coach, you don't necessarily really mind what the, the offense and defense did. You're more concerned with what the special teams did. So that way, you can actually filter it based on that alone. Show them the quad view. Do what? Show them the quad view. I love the quad view. Mm. Bottom profile. So, say that again. There's no clock. Correct. They don't. Correct. Because as far as they're concerned, they're more concerned with the actual, like the play that happened. So think it, they're not. Depending on what the coach is, the offense is off the field. So they're not necessarily concerned with whether it's two minutes in or three minutes in because their players are sitting right in front of them. Now, a lot of times when the head coach is using it, then they're definitely using it live in the game, and they're seeing something right after they come off the field. So it just depends on the scenario, but, but yes, it does not show the clock time. Um, but the, the video team, the guys that actually take the video, they are tracking it. The coaches do have communication systems that allow them to communicate between field and uh, booth, so they're, they're definitely well aware of the time, play clock, and all that. I love the quad view. It's, yeah. it's an option they have when they set up their profiles. If they don't want to have to scroll between the shots, they can start with the quad view, which I think is just a really cool way to look at a play. Yeah. So, yep. so this is kind of what they're looking at. So if, if we were to go to like a head coach view, uh, so one of the things that you can do here is you're obviously going to see all the plays. So whether it's offense, defense, but what you can do is you can actually go over here on the left-hand side and basically filter on demand what you want to see. So in this case right now, you're showing special teams uh, versus offense, defense. So that's all completely up to the team on what they want to do. But that way, they can filter based on what they want to see at that particular point in time. OK? Cool. All right. Switch it back. All right, so now you finally have gotten a chance to see what it is that kind of the end goal of all of the infrastructure and all of the creation is that application that they're using on the devices. And that is a custom written application by Microsoft, you know, obviously in working with the NFL for the needs of what specifically should be there, but a custom developed application um, to change the game, to make it better. All right, so we've talked about the infrastructure that's there you know, to make it happen. We've talked a little about the architecture. We've talked about the application. Now, what about some of the other aspects of what you have to do with IT, right? Some of the operations, um, things like setup and reporting and just kind of operational elements. So what we've got here is the server configuration options, what we usually just for short call the menu, OK? Now, this is something that the support personnel use, not the players and the coaches. They don't ever see this stuff. The only thing the players and the coaches ever see is the application that Kyle was demoing to you guys. Um, but this is sort of our center point for you know, a lot of the, the, the routine operational things that have to happen. And I'm not going to go through every single button on here, but some of the kinds of things that they can do is export information, right? When Kyle talked in the beginning, these networks are, we have no connectivity to these networks. These are isolated networks. These are networks that don't exist before the game. They exist while the game occurs. And when the game is done, they get cleaned up and taken away and they basically cease to exist for another week or another two weeks or whenever the next home game is, okay? So we have no access to anything. If, if we need to research, you know, maybe we got a report of some behavior that happened in the game, and we need to research that, we need that information without being able to touch the system. So, you know, part of the operational duties is for the on-site support personnel to export information about what just happened in that game and get it to us so that we have some hope. And this is part of the planning that, that Kyle was talking about earlier, where we had to really think ahead about how do you work with an IT infrastructure in, in an environment that is not available, that doesn't exist, we have no access to it. And it's not easy, we can't just midweek say, 
oh, let me head over to the dome and turn on the system and go check the server. Like, it's not that simple. We got 32 stadiums uh, just in the US alone and remote stadiums, it's just not, it's not feasible. So, um, so with the operation, the operational aspects we have in this menu, it has just greatly simplified it and allows the support personnel to have a very touch-friendly menu. They can hit the buttons, they can do the activities that they need to do. Some of them are pre-game activities, um, some of them could be in-game activities, and some of them are post-game activities. Uh, some of them get done, uh, you know, at the beginning of the season during the initial setup. It's all sorts of different things. But uh, the menu system behind the scenes is mostly driven by PowerShell scripts. Anybody here? PowerShell person, I like doing some automation. I'm, I'm a big lover of PowerShell and automation. And uh, yeah, a lot of this is just driven by, by PowerShell scripts. Um, and you know, it's interesting because before we looked at setting up this whole architecture and infrastructure, you know, we looked at kind of the, the Microsoft stack as a whole of, you know, how, do, how, does, how do you manage Microsoft machines? And there are lots of solutions out there to manage machines, but a lot of them don't fit great when you don't have a network that's up all the time and you don't have a network that's actually routed to each other. So uh, we, post, or we face some real challenges in terms of how to pull all this off. Could we use an AD for you know, identity? Could we use something like SCCM to manage the devices? And these are all things we had to, to face. And in the end, a lot of what we do, those solutions didn't fit. So we really kind of developed our own solution, not, not just Kyle and I, but, uh, but you know, our whole team. So, so that is kind of the, the hub of the operations. It is, uh, it is pretty cool. So let's get into some fun facts right here. We said this was coming. Um, by the way, in the picture there, you can kind of see the charging cart. Did we pass the other slide that had the charging cart? Okay, there, there's a better picture coming up in just a couple of slides. Uh, but you can see the charging card in that picture. Uh, it's not a great angle. You'll see a better angle in just a sec. Um, but it kind of reminds me of like a mini refrigerator. <laughs> it's kind of cool. So, all right. So some fun facts here. Okay, 36 stadiums. How are we doing on time? So 36 stadiums. All right. Anybody already tried to figure out how there's 36 stadiums when there's only 32 NFL teams? Okay. We got London, there's two different London stadiums happening. There's uh, Twickenham and, uh, and Wembley, okay? The Hall of Fame game is in Canton, that's at a different stadium. And there's a game in Mexico City this season as well, okay? Um, so 36 stadiums, 170 servers in play, right? So that includes the servers for all four locations. There are spare physical servers for redundancy in addition to that failover capabilities. Okay, we have replacement servers that are literally on standby that we could ship to a location. So if a server dies and, and its replacement has to go in, we've got servers ready to ship out there to replace the replacements. Okay, uh, 1,848 Surface devices. It's, it's a lot of devices. <laughs> That's a lot of devices to, to set up and put covers on and, and you know, set up the software and install the software. There, there's a lot out there. You don't realize, you know, 1,848. 32 teams, but 1,800 surfaces. Do the math, that's how many there is. Um, so 80 replacement devices, we're always ready. You know, if a truck drives over a surface and maybe does some damage or, or something gets scratched or whatever it could be, um, if a device needs to be replaced or even if we suspect, you know, a device was dropped. So we don't want to take a chance that maybe something will happen someday. We, we've got a system where during the week we, we swap these devices out. We have lots of devices spare. Okay, here's some of the staggering numbers, right? 45,540 feet of cable. There's an incredible amount of cable that's involved with all this stuff, and if you see a game, it, it's amazing that, you know, when we get there four or five hours before the game starts, you'll look out at the field and there is nothing on the sideline. It's just grass. And then somehow, by the time that game starts, that entire bench area and that sideline is just filled with infrastructure, right? And at the end of that game, you look one hour afterwards, and at most stadiums, it is completely empty, especially the grass sidelines, because they got to get that stuff off the grass to keep the grass healthy. So it is amazing what gets stood up. I have to admit, and this is, a, this is something cool I learned after going to a few games, there is a lot of systems that support an NFL game. It's actually pretty incredible, okay? Um, some more fun factoids, let's see, 11,000 lines of client code, which I'm not a developer, but I actually am pretty impressed by that. The capability that we get out of the application with only 11,000 lines, I think is kind of cool. All right, 5,000 lines of server code on the PlayView servers. Uh, 27,000 test plays since preseason. You know, that number is probably conservative. One thing that is a huge part of this project is because 
it is, it is difficult to replicate a real world scenario. We test, 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 test. Simulate, we have labs to test. Uh, it's an amazing. That number of 27,000 plays, that's increasing every day. Because even Kyle and I, and we're not on the app dev team or anything like that, we run test plays, we try to you know, replicate scenarios that we hear about, whatever it is. 6,000 lines of PowerShell code. It's a pretty decent, pretty decent bit of PowerShell, 6,000 lines, considering how much you can do in such a small amount of PowerShell code. So, Lots of great factoids. There's, it's an amazing amount that goes into it so that some guys can throw around the pigskin, right? All right. So what did we learn in all this? Okay. So this is the third season now of Surface on the Sideline, the third season of players and coaches that are using these things. So what have we learned? Okay. Real world scenario. It is extremely hard to sort of pre-create and reproduce game time situations. It is, it is a heck of a thing when there are you know, 80,000 people in a very small space <laughs> and when there are you know, 90, 300 pound men <laughs> clustered around a Wi-Fi antenna, right? So it's really hard to replicate real world scenarios. Weather conditions, Kyle talked about this. I mean, just temperature alone, you know, we've got to be able to support from well over 100 degrees to below zero. Rain, ice, sleet, whatever. Okay, the game must go on. This is not like a normal IT thing where imagine you know, you're planning some deployment of something in IT and something goes wrong in your testing, you might push back the rollout. There's no pushing back of an NFL game. There's no pushing back of the schedule. If something is not ready, then that creates a major issue. It's a no-fail scenario. Uh, test equipment and environment, we've got to be able to repro everything. Um, from the networking to the servers, just to everything. Stadium support, right? How do we handle the, the local device, right? So uh, it's, a, it's a, like a three-level system of support from what we call the purple hats, which are NFL personnel that are the primary support, to multiple levels of remote and phone support. Sometimes Kyle and I go out to the games. There are others besides us that support it as well. Um, user experience importance is a really big deal. Um, what we found from season over season over season is the easier that we can make the operational activities, how to turn on the device, how to shut down the devices, the smoother things work and the more predictable it is. And then adoption, it has been amazing to watch how the teams are changing and maybe coaches that were old school coaches and very resistant to using the tablets in the first season are now our biggest advocates. You can't take the tablet away from these guys. I mean, goodness sakes, the, the, it, it's amazing. So it's like every season, the teams use more and more of the tablets, and they depend on them so much. It, it's incredible. It's a great feeling, but it also puts a lot of pressure on us because we've got to keep this stuff running. Um, game day experience, I'm not going to go through all these, but uh, on-site planning and testing are key. Everything is tested. Everything is, is dress rehearsed before the game. Many plays are sent test games, test everything. You just, you never know the sorts of things that are gonna go wrong. Wi-Fi interference is a big deal, so we are always prepared to go wired. That's a great example, right? Because you can never always trust that in a stadium bowl with 80,000 people that Wi-Fi is gonna be reliable. Power can be knocked out. You know, there's UPSs, multiple power source routing, devices overheating, wet devices. So these are all the kinds of things we deal with, but it's just testing, repro, testing, repro is how we deal with all that stuff. Okay, um, so some of the, the new and improved things that we've done this season, upgraded devices. Okay, we're on Surface Pro 4s. We've got the latest and greatest devices out there that we're, that we're using. Enriched SVS solution. Every season we're making the application better. We're adding functionality, uh, just making it work better, and we're really listening to the, the league and the NFL and what they need and just you know, meeting the need plus. Uh, enhanced monitoring capabilities. We build tools. We didn't show you the monitor. There is also a monitoring application that the local personnel can use on site to keep an eye on how the tablets are doing when they're in the hands of the, the, the coaches and the players. Um, simplify the operations. This is part of that UX experience we talked about. The easier we can make the processes, the more likely they are to be reliably followed. Okay. Improve re reporting capabilities. We've learned a lot through the seasons and uh, being able to get the data we need during the game, they got to export the right data because we need the right stuff during the week so that we can figure out what it is we need to do differently the next weekend or what it is that happened, whatever, whatever that is. Okay? So, we're almost out of time. Uh, some of the key takeaways, all right? 
If you go into the store, the Microsoft store, and you buy a Surface off of the shelf, that is not ready to just go on the sideline. But the great thing about Surface and Windows is that it can be customized, and we put together a solution that works. I mean, we have Surface on the sideline in NFL games. The geek in me will never stop thinking that that's amazing, okay? Um, so how far can you go with customizing Surface and Windows for your solution? I don't know, how far does your imagination stretch? Because that is honestly the limit, okay? Surface is game ready. I mean, this, this thing's on the sideline. It's in snow, in rain, in sleet, in heat. It takes it all. Even the, the head of Johnny Manziel, that device was just fine for those of you that know what I'm talking about, okay? Um, enhancements position you for greater success. We are always looking at where we are, you know, what needs to be fixed and where this thing is going in the future. Who knows what the future will hold? We don't know about next season yet, but just keep an eye on the sports news and just remember you know, all of the effort that goes on behind the scenes just to you know, help make a football game better, okay? Um, as Kyle mentioned, we're gonna take questions outside. There are still two more um, devices related sessions. There's one right after this over in C1. You have to hurry up to get over there. Uh, one more tomorrow on Surface Hub uh, in your enterprise. The expo hall, unfortunately, is now closed. Uh, it's not open tomorrow, so can't really do the expo hall. All right, so the great part is we are going to give away a Surface Pro 4. It's been done all week in the expo hall, but we're gonna do it here in this room. Really quickly before we do that, let me just touch and I'll come back to that. Um, don't forget to stay connected, guys. Your Ignite is almost over. All right, you got a little bit left today. You got the big party tonight. Hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Uh, you've got some, some more sessions tomorrow, but don't let the experience end, right? From joining, you know, subscribing to IT bulletins, looking at the blogs, the Virtual Academy, my goodness, if you have not checked out Virtual Academy, that is an incredible resource. So don't let your, your efforts of learning and getting better end at Ignite. Please don't forget to give us evaluation. Uh, this is the first time that a session like this about Surface in the NFL has been done at a public event like this. So we've got to hear what you guys think. Uh, maybe we can bring it back in the future. Who knows? So, but without your feedback, we'll, we'll never know. Okay? So again, we're going to give away the Surface. Thank you very much for coming. We're actually just about right on time. So did everybody get a, um, a stub? Does anybody feel like they didn't get their stub? Check okay. with the ladies at the front door. They quickly, can... quickly, let's get him a stub. We gotta get it in the bucket so we can choose it. Okay, Kyle's got the bucket up here. We're gonna add the last stub into it really quick. He's so gonna they're... shake it up. You do have to be present to win. And it is a wonderful Surface Pro 4. i5-256, the exact same device I use every day of my life. I love this thing. The nice navy blue keyboard, so... Uh, it's a heck of a piece of swag to take away from Ignite, I think. So small disclaimer, there's literally several hundred of these in this bucket, so it might take a minute to find one of these. Yeah, the you years. gotta be present, so if, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll keep calling them until, uh, until we give this thing away. So. All right, so 11612. One, 11974. One, yep. Hey, there we go. Hey, all right. So we do have some paperwork. Yep. So Navin will take care of that for you. Yep, so Navin here behind you cool. will take care of the paperwork. Thanks. Folks, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed it. Have a great rest of Ignite. And if you do have any questions, we'll be outside. Like I said, we do have four devices that are game day devices that you can go hands-on oh, yeah. if you'd like to see them firsthand. Yeah, you want to touch one and you want to become a coach? So, Hang out with us you. outside. Thank you very much.